Hey guys, what is going on? It is your good buddy Sam, and it is time for another exciting Max MSP tutorial. Friends, it has been uh, ridiculously, unacceptably, and entirely too long since the last tutorial. I think it's been something going on two months now, and um, I don't know if it's been hard for you. I'm assuming you didn't even realize, but um, for me, it's been very difficult. Uh, these have been troubling times for me, and I just want to say I'm glad. I'm glad to have you guys back in my life. This is going to be. This is going to be good. Um, so whether or not uh, you actually care about Max anymore, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's very good for me to do this again. What am I talking about? I don't know. Anyway, so today, today we're going to focus on the swarm. That's right. Today we are going to look point blank into the oozing, swarming, um, teeming mass that is uh, the Boyd's algorithm. And we're going to come away with some disturbingly wonderful sounds and a new appreciation for the power of the masses. So we're going to start, before getting into the Boyd's algorithm, what it is and how we use it in Max, we're going to go straight to the internet, um, not to procrastinate, but to get a Max object. And where do we go to get Max objects? We, of course, go to maxobjects.com, the one-stop shop for all things Max and the biggest Max objects database in the entire world. Also the only one, I think, but regardless, it's big. So in the search box up here, um, you can type whatever you want. You have free will and agency, but um, if you're following along with this tutorial, you want to type Boyds, B-O-I-D-S. And a whole bunch of externals are going to come up here. Uh, I don't think it actually matters which one you click on, but you can click on this one, Boyds. Um, you won't see an actual download link. That's okay. Don't panic. Just take a deep breath and then click down here on this little link. This takes you to Eric Singer's webpage. Um, he's the guy who did the original port, I think. Um, a few of the people have worked on some more Mac specific objects since then, including um, Wesley Smith, a co-worker of mine and an extreme badass. Um, so anyway, the thing you want to download is down here, version 1.1, Boyd's Max Jitter, Jitter UB, which stands for Universal Binary. So click that noise, um, download it. All this shit is going to fly up in your face. It's okay, just let it fly. Um, and then, oh my god, if you go look in your downloads, um, this guy here, Boyd's Max Jitter UB, uh, you want to take this and come over to Applications, Max 6, Cycling 74, and you can take the whole thing, this whole entire folder, you just download it and just drop it right in the Cycling 74 folder. And uh, I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again, but that just adds the object and a whole bunch of help files and some documentation, and who knows, maybe Dirty Pictures too. It adds all that stuff to your Max search path so Max can find it. Um, anyway, that's done. Let's close all these bullshit windows and focus on what matters. Let's focus on the Max. Let's open up Max and Max will take six years to load because I don't know, it's got, no, okay, it's not so bad. Um, anyway, once Max is open, let's make a new project. You could make a new patcher, but uh, this is a Max 6. Um, and full disclosure, I think this, this tutorial will work in Max 5, um, so don't get too worried if um, you are using Max 5, but if you are using Max 6, you'll find it's much more convenient to make a project. And I'm going to call this Boyd's 23. Call it whatever you want, but for me it's Boyd's 23 because we're looking at Boyd's and this is the 23rd tutorial. Save that shit and then um, let's make a new patch or I guess project. Click here, add new file to project, add new file. I'm going to call this one main.maxpat and you'll see it's now up here in my patchers and we are ready to go. So to get started, make a jit.boids 2D object, wait a few seconds while it loads, and then option click it to open the help file. So before we go too much further, um, let's just take a little quick tour, a, a little quick tour um, of the help file here and talk about what's going on. So Boids is an algorithm um, for simulating a swarm. And a swarm is, well, you're looking at it, it's a, it's a big agglomeration of little particles where each one behaves in a certain way that gives the whole thing this cool kind of swarming behavior. And in this case, they're all sort of clumped around the center point, but you can see they're all sort of moving in this beautiful, this undulating um, clockwise uh, ballet. Um, a really a incredibly bad ballet, but a ballet nonetheless. And... Um, the Boyd's algorithm, the history is really cool. It's an old algorithm. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Jurassic Park? 
Uh, that scene where the T-Rex lunges out of nowhere and like grabs one of those dinosaurs and they're all kind of flocking away from it. The, um, the way they decided where those dinosaurs are going to run was using a variant of the Boyd's algorithm. So it's cool. It's been around a while. It has a lot of history and we get to play with it in Max and that's really cool. So the way to think about this, each one of these little particle dudes um, has some kind of, has, it's, like a, it's like a person. Each one of these little particles has hopes, dreams, desires, um, but unlike a person, these aren't interesting hopes and dreams and desires. These are um, little desires like like a human being might want a delicious sandwich or um, universal health care. But each one of these little boys just wants uh, just wants to go with the flow, just wants to be attracted to its neighbors. Well, in that case, it's a little bit like a human being. It's sort of attracted to its neighbors. Um, so I don't know, where am I going with this? Anyway, the parameters that are important for each one of these particles are uh, center attraction, which is how much each particle wants to get to the center. Um, the match, match is how much each particle wants to match the speed and velocity of its neighbor. So each particle wants to head in basically the same direction as the guys around it. Um, there's an avoidance instinct, which is how much each particle wants to stay away from its neighbors. Um, Overall speed, inertia, is how much each particle resists turning. And finally, there is pref dist, which is how far each particle wants to be from its neighbors. And if you mess with these, you can get some, um, you can change the overall emergent behavior of the swarm. So if we come down here and change pref dist to one, now the particles will clump together in this dense um, white dwarf supernova action. And if we make pref dist like six, now the particles want to be really far away from each other and they explode out in what I did not realize would be that cool a pattern, but um, yeah, that's kind of crazy. So anyway, that's Boyd's and we're going to get started by taking this whole patch, uh, edit, all, copy, close, and then just pasting the help patch into our patch. Um, and then I'm going to um, make this window floating by coming down here, finding the window, which is uh, here, info, and I like it when it's floating, so we're going to check the floating box and the FSAA box, full screen anti-aliasing, and freeze both of these attributes so that when the patch loads, they will be in the state that we set. Um, I'm gonna save this and then close it and close the project, and then reopen it. Just to make sure everything's working, and it is, and that's great. So, next thing we wanna do is come in here and delete all this stuff from the help patch that we don't want. So I'm gonna delete all this text, move this up here. Um, all this stuff we wanna tweak, let's see, I'll leave there. Setting the background color to be gray, that's fine, I don't care. This P sets thing um, could be really, really important. The entire patch might depend on this. So let's delete it, and then I'm going to move this up here. And all this parameter excitement, bounding box, I don't know. I'm going to delete this thing. Um, and, oops, didn't want to move that one. Put this up here, and I think that should be good. This is just more text. Cool. A um, couple more things to play with. The render here, the erase color is being set, you can see maybe to 000, 0, 000, 0.051, which means that the thing isn't erasing completely between um, renders, which is why you can sort of see these particles are, there's a trail, like a ghost trail. Uh, I don't want that, so I'm gonna make the erase color um, opaque black. And now uh, you can barely see the particles, but that erase color, there's no more trail anyway. Um, but if I come down here and change the draw color for this GL mesh to be um, pure red, now the particles should look, yeah. So anyway, this is a really, gives a really distinct picture of what's going on, which is good. Um, so that's that. Here are all the parameters we can play with. Here is a patter storage and auto patter, which is going to save all this stuff. And finally, here is the um, simulation that's running and the uh, stuff that's going to actually use OpenGL to draw um, our state. So let's take a closer look now at um, what is happening over here and talk about what we're going to do as opposed to just look at pretty pictures of um, dots moving around. 
because we are college educated and we are artists. We are we're new media artists, and if we don't make uh, if we don't make a sound that irritates and terrifies old people soon, um, we're gonna have to go back to art school and have some endure some more crits. Um, so in the interest of avoiding crits, let's get back to work. Uh, where am I going with this? So look over here. This is the important part of this patch. The simulation right here, every time this jit.boids 2D object gets a bang, it updates the position of every object in our patch. No, sorry, every particle in the swarm. If it updated the position of every object in the patch, it would be very, very difficult to patch. Um, anyway, once it's done that, it sends out of this outlet here information that the xray.jit.boids render object uses to actually do the drawing. So jit.boids2d is just doing the simulation, and then jit.xray.boids render actually does the drawing. It sends some parameters to jitgl mesh, and then jitgl mesh um, draws the little squiggles that we're looking at. So, what actually comes out of jit.boids2d is determined by this um, box down here, the output mode that can be either new xy, new xy, old xy, or new xy, old xy, speed azimuth. So for each particle, give its position in x and y, its old position in x and y, its speed and its azimuth, which is an unnecessarily fancy word for angle or heading or just the direction in which this uh, little particle is moving. I haven't gotten a lot of use out of speed and azimuth. Um, it's possible that they're actually super useful, but for in terms of sonification, I've never gotten that much out of them. Um, so I'm just gonna ignore them for now and leave it on new xy, which means that what comes out of jit.boids 2D here is going to be two planes, um, giant columns, where each entry in the column, the ith entry in the column, is going to be what Boyd I is doing. So um, I'm gonna move all this junk over to the side. Oops, not what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. And let's make some sound already, man. That'll be fun. Um, so jit dot uh, unpack one. This will give us just the first plane of this matrix, which is just the X position of each particle. And then jit.spill will give us um, a list. We'll take a jitter matrix in and gives us a max list out. And now down here, you can see the positions of all of these little particles. Isn't that handy? That's what a, what a cool little trick. What a cool thing we did. Um, and if we do zl.slice1, we can look at just the position of the first particle. Uh, I'm going to set my pref dist back to be like two, so they clump together. <laughs> Look at them clumping. That's uh, so cute. Um, and now you can see these particles are sort of um, between... Interesting. These particles are sort of between... Um... Whoa! Whoa! What the... Oh my god, that's crazy! All right, well, I, I was just clicking around at random, and uh, that's weird. So let's go back to new. Uh, I didn't expect that. Um, anyway, so <laughs> particles are goofing around. I think the bounds of this thing are between um, minus 1 and 1. So let's do, uh, oops, let's make a new object. Scale minus 1, uh, 1, 1 to be say um, 40 to 60, 40 point to 60 points, they're floating point values, and then M2F zero point, and a saw tilde object, and finally let's hook that up to a live.gain. Isn't this exciting? Turn this down because this sound is going to be annoying. Um, easy DAC, hook this up to this, saw up to gain, and we should be sonifying. So, I don't know if you can hear it, but um, that's definitely the sound of one of these little particles swarming around the center. Isn't that cool? I mean, we're using a little particle to make a sound. Okay, so that's not that cool. Uh, but that's because we're only making one sound. What if we sonified every single one of these guys at the same time? What if we could take the position of each one of these little dudes 
and map it to a different sawtooth wave. Wouldn't that be incredible? I think it would be. So let's do that. Um, to do that, we're going to make use of the poly tilde object, um, and we're going to see why I chose to um, make this into a project rather than just a simple patch. So if we come back over to this um, projects thing over here, let's add a new file and call it boyds underscore poly and throw that into patchers. And then what I want this to be is really just a sawtooth wave. Um, I'm going to give it a sawtooth wave and um, a filter, I guess. I think that would be cool. So let's make a saw tilde. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on. Navigate zoom. I can't see. Oh my god. All right, let's zoom in. Zoom in is, of course, command equals. That makes sense. So saw tilde in one. Um, pass that straight into, so, well, now let's add a line tilde object. Um, message dollar one forty. So this is taking. Uh, so whenever we set a new frequency, we pass that um, to this line object, and tell the line tilde object to ramp to that new frequency value over the course of forty milliseconds. Let me pass that over to saw, and um, I'm going to add a resin tilde filter, um, or maybe a resonant low pass. Resin tilde or low res. Let's go with low, hmm, resin wants an input gain, nah, let's just go with low res. Um, and give it the cutoff frequency of, I don't know, 220 by default and a response of 0 0.5. Um, saw through low res to out tilde one. Piece of cake. And then finally in two and um, Similarly, align all the same stuff and just pass that through to the cutoff frequency of the filter. Sweet. So once more with feeling, we're going to send our frequency in here. That's going to set this saw object um, to output a different frequency. It's going to go through this low res filter. And the cutoff frequency of that filter is determined by uh, what comes in from this line object. So that's it. That's our very simple poly. Let's save this and um, close it. Uh, so now instead of this, let's see, we want the, this is going to be the X coordinate. Um, so we don't need any of this. We do need this live dot game. We do need the easy DAC. And so you've got um, 4,900, 4,000, geez, 499 particles. So let's make a poly tilde Boyd's poly um, 499 going to take a little while to load all that up. No big deal. Now, what comes out of this um, spill, remember, is a huge list where each element in that list is going to be um, the position of Boyd I. But we want to send um, each one of those positions to a different member of this um, poly tilde. So poly tilde one, we want to get the frequent, we want its frequency to come from the, um, uh, we want the position of bird one to go to poly tilde number one, the position of bird two to go to poly tilde number two. So the way to do that um, is to use the, uh, is to set the target of poly tilde. So if we make an object uh, message box here, target dollar one and send that to poly tilde and made an in integer box here and set this to be like I don't know uh, four now whatever went to this poly tilde would go towards um, synth number four so what we want to do um, is take this jit dot spill guy and um, use a list funnel object list funnel um, and give it an offset of one what this is going to do is you can see if we pass in a list that's like 40, 50, 60 into list funnel, what comes out is going to be, um, well, it says 30, 60 here, but really what happened is if we make a print object, 
um, and send this to the max window instead, you'll see that what gets printed out is 140, 250, 360, which is awesome. It's taking each element of the list, prepending its um, index, and then spitting it out. Um, and this one here just means start at one. By default, it starts at zero. So that's great. That means we can take jit.spill, pass it to list funnel one. It's going to output um, the index followed by the position of each bird. Then we're going to take that trigger list list. Um, first thing we're going to do is take the um, first element of the list, which is its index, and make that the target. And then we're going to take the second element of the list, which is the position of the Boyd. We're going to scale it to be um, in the range of 40 to 60. These are MIDI note values. Take the MIDI, oops, MIDI to frequency of what comes out of this guy and then send him right in here. And that should set the pitch of that given Boyd. And I'm gonna hook this up to live.game. Move this guy down here, scroll like this. And unless we've screwed something up, um, I'm gonna turn this way down and then turn on the sound. hearing some really ugly sounds, which is good, question mark. Um, cool, so a nice frequency value is coming out of there. Um, I think I hear a lot of clicking, which I think is my audio. Yeah, we're overloading audio big time. So let's decrease the number of voids to 200 and um, decrease this poly likewise to just be 200 and see if that doesn't bring our audio yeah, cool. All right, listen to that. It's the sound of the swarm. Um, so if we change the range on these guys a little bit, um, 60. Let's see, instead of making it go between MIDI note 40 and MIDI note 60, let's make it go between MIDI note 60 and MIDI note 80. <laughs> so goofy. Also take this and um, here we're looking at the uh, first plane but we can also take this duplicate it jitta unpack one at um, offset one this will look at the y coordinate so this is looking at the x coordinate this will look at the y coordinate and we can use this to set our um, uh, filter cutoff so we set the target here as well, and then set the filter cutoff here. Oh my god, listen to that. <laughs> Gnashing of teeth, man. Parameters. 
Let's see, let's make it so they really want to get to the center. their max speed. Make it so they don't want to be near each other at all. Anyway, you can play with parameters for days, um, or at least <laughs> I could, um, but you can also mess around with the um, whether or not you're using a saw tooth wave, a square tooth wave, the filter you use, you could use these voids to do um, index into a buffer, you could use them for all kinds of stuff, and maybe I'll do another couple tutorials where we look at some of that stuff, but um, yeah, in case you want to stop there, you can stop there, that's a quick intro to how you use voids, how you can do a little bit of matrix munging to... Um, grab the x and y coordinates and use that to set the position of the voids. Um, I hope that was a, f a fun jutaining um, exploration into the world of the void and um, a nice look into the heart of the swarm and I uh, hope that was good for you guys. So anyway, thanks for watching. As always, more tutorials hopefully sooner than the next two months and um, hope you had fun. Thanks for watching.